A few years ago, I was stuck in a traffic jam and getting visibly irritated by the minute. However, my friend who was driving seemed to be having a good time. When I asked him, he said, until a decade ago, we would wait for a car to cross our streets. Now they are all over. Traffic jams are a sign that we are progressing. He is also the kind of person who believes climate change is the global conspiracy. But he is sort of right. I mean, no cars means no money to buy cars, right? That cannot be a good thing, I guess. So celebrate the next time you are stuck in traffic for hours. If he was here, I am sure he would have told us how the destruction of dams, bridges and roads is a good thing. Anyway, let us get straight to the point. What happened in Sikkim is not an act of God or sudden and it was certainly not a cloudburst leading to a flash flood. It is also more than clear that what happened on October 4 was not a matter of if but when. What do you remember of 2008, the global recession? Some Sikkim residents remember it for different reasons. This story is from June 2008 and was published in the Frontline magazine. This story, link to which is in the description, details how even 15 years ago Sikkim residents, and mind you, these are Sikkim residents, not some paid troll or anti-national left China, Pakistan, Tukri Tukri Gang, etc. What were they protesting against? The dams on the river Tista in Zongu in North Sikkim the home of the Lepchas, Sikkim's earliest inhabitants. These young men are in hospital, starving to make sure their tribe survives. Fifteen years later, we are much worse off. Some dam projects, like the one through Zongu, did not materialize, sure, but others did. And the result is here for us to see. The point we are making is this. Dams have a contentious history. There is no dearth of people who will tell you how hydropower is a clean, green source of energy and power generation, while its detractors believe it upsets ecology in a way that can almost never be reversed. Then there is question of who is displaced. Experts sitting in offices talking about the benefits of hydroelectric power are unlikely to lose their home, land and village to such projects, much like the politicians who promote them. Over the past decade, whether it is Sikkim or Arunachal, we have been convinced that hydroelectric power is the gold ticket that will pummel northeast into the future. Political leaders, especially those in power, never forget to tell you how we must build more dams. Because when dams fail, they almost never lose their homes. I mean, ever seen a politician living in a relief camp or a leader of a famous party trying his best to save his livestock? Unlikely. And oh, it is not as if the government is unaware of the dangers of dams. I mean, how can they not know? But here is a lovely example. We found this paper called Sikkim State Action Plan Report, which seems to have been published in 2015 and was received by no less than the then CM of the state, Pawan Chamling. It has a lot of literature on climate change, hydroelectric power and the way ahead. Read it if you are the kind of person who reads old government reports. Our editor did, so he recommends the same. In this document, on page 18, there is a fascinating paragraph called Impacts on Hydropower Generation. It says there are three main impacts of climate change on hydropower projects. First, the available discharge of a river may change, since hydrology is usually related to local weather conditions such as temperature and precipitation in the catchment area. This will have a direct influence on the economic and financial viability of a hydropower project. Moreover, hydropower operations may have to be reconsidered to the extent that hydrological periodicities or seasonality change. The reason is that if the flow of water changes, different power generating operations, example peak versus base load, would be possible to use other designs for water use such as reservoirs. Second, an unexpected increase in climate variability may trigger extreme climate events by increasing the volume of water suddenly leading to floods or a decrease in water leading to droughts. Finally, closely related to the above, changing hydrology and possibly extreme events must of necessity impact sediment risks and measures. More sediment along with other factors such as the changed composition of water could raise the probability that a hydropower project suffers greater exposure to turbine erosion. When destruction actually occurs, the cost of recovery would be enormous. 
an unexpected amount of sediment will also lower turbine and generator efficiency resulting in a de decline in energy generated. So yes, the government was more than aware. And even if this paper had not been prepared, we do have the famous or shall I say tragic example of what happened in Kedarnath in 2013. So yes, to summarize, aware, yes, acted upon, of course not. This brings us to cloud bursts and flash floods. What is the other name of Sikkim, the Himalayan kingdom? What is the him in the Himalayas? Ice. What is the glacier? Okay, this is rather getting school-like. Let us change course. And for that, let us refer to this 2021 paper which has become pretty viral and for good reasons. And as a journalist first and foremost, I doth my cap to the person who wrote the extract. The Tista Basin in Sikkim, Himalaya hosts numerous glacial lakes in the high-altitude glacierized region, including one of the largest and fastest growing South Lonak Lake. While these lakes are mainly located in remote and unsettled mountain valleys, far-reaching glacial lake outbursts, floods may claim lives and damage assets up to tens of kilometers downstream. In the entire paper, they highlight in great detail that may not make sense to all of us, how glacial lake outburst floods are becoming a huge concern for all of Sikkim. The paper in fact focuses only on Lonak Lake, talking specifically about settlements the paper even tells you how many bridges are at risk. Talking about how a glacial lake outburst flood can impact in various scenarios, the authors say that anything between 5 and 13 bridges, 176 to 248 houses and 2 to 5 industrial facilities are at risk. Where you ask, most of these are located in Chungthang, the town that experienced rapid urbanization during the past few years due to new construction and operation of the hydropower station. The paper says. In fact, the paper even lists the dangers of increasing settlements. The construction of the hydropower plant at Chungthang has recently been completed. It has increased the chances of continuous availability of power in the region and the possible growth of more small-scale industries. The hydropower plant is expected to foster economic development in the region. However, as reflected in the recent constructions, it could also lead to building houses and other facilities on slopes closer to the river valley, thus increasing the risk. The increasing infrastructure in the region is leading to loss of vegetated riverbanks, reducing this natural buffer to flooding. This trend is common across the HKKH where poorly regulated expansion of housing, roads, tourism and other related infrastructure increases the risk to gloves and other disasters. I'm assuming that by now you have seen the destruction of dam projects in Sikkim. Of course, the current CM was very quick to point out it wasn't me and very clearly said that the dam was built under substandard practices which led to its collapse and that a probe will be ordered. Sounds good, but this is like going to buy chilies to make chicken after the chicken has been consumed. If the Sikkim government takes climate change as seriously as it claims, has it identified the infra projects that are under the most risk? If yes, what is it doing to address these concerns? If the government knew that the dam was substandard, why wait till the destruction to act on it? Who were the con contractors and have they worked on any other projects? But wait, this is the environment we are talking about. Nothing, I mean nothing matters as little as the environment. Political parties can organize a rally, litter the whole area with plastic flags and ugly posters and of course, all that is fine because why not? Sikkim will head to elections this year. Do you think environment or climate change will be an election issue? Three states went to election this year and in not a single state did the environment become an issue. We even did a video about it and the worst part, even people did not care enough to watch it. That is where we are when it comes to the environment and in the northeast. We like to project that we are the custodians of our ecology while spitting Tamil all over. We like to talk about conserving the environment while chewing gutka and throwing plastic wrappers everywhere and we never even, uh, even ask our politicians how they wish to protect the environment. Every year, they will plant some random trees, clean streets that are already cleaned and their cronies will act like they made their world a better place. Sikkim and its residents will continue to feel the wrath of climate change and who knows what happens next. Today, a part of a lake collapsed. What if all of it collapsed? How prepared is 
Gangtok or the rest of the state, say for an earthquake, do not bother answering. We know the answer. We will blame it on a divine act and continue with plundering the environment because what is more important, money or the lives of few ordinary people? Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.